since starting things off here on the attack. Scary. Yeah, yeah. You haven't wasted any time. I'll tell you what, Jill. If there is any indication of how a game is going to be played or how confident a team is going into a map, it's a defensive team banning Nomad as the first ban <laughs> and forcing <laughs> the attacking team to ban the Thatcher. Like, if that is just not the most alpha male banning phase we've ever seen, <laughs> I don't know what is. The alpha team, the alpha team are the defensive team that ban Nomad and force you to ban Thatcher. It's true. Oh my goodness. I mean, look, if you're Furia, you you are the, the chalet Chad. You're the Chad of chalet. You're the ch-ch, you know? They've even banned the Jaeger. Jaeger, like what like, is going on? What are on? they doing? <laughs> Honestly, in my head, that was a no ban or like a Jaeger or a Mozzie ban or something like that. It was either like, yeah, you think we need this? No, 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 you're mistaken. Or it was like, uh, nah, no ban. We'll just no ban this and we'll just see how we roll. No ban is the alpharist. That's like the alpha that plus is. plus. I think there's a team in one of the uh, sub leagues. I think it's the Suda, uh, the Suda Mexicano or something like that. That just didn't ban anything the, all season. Mean, <laughs> the the Sudamericano. Sudamericano, yeah. They just didn't ban not anything. South, Me South Mexico does not have its own league. I don't know which one it was, Joe. But there was one team that just didn't ban anything anytime. So it was like really skewed when, when they got into the, the Cup of Elite Six. But um, yeah, what a what a phase from Fury. They've already given us our money's worth here inside of this one. <laughs> and, oh my uh, God. I'm like, excited for this game. <laughs> I mean, Shelly, sometimes it's attacker sided. You know, it, it flips and it flops, and there's there's not really a clear indication. It varies region to region. It's one of the more sort of temperamental maps like that. But Ints have got a chance here at picking up a couple of early rounds. Listen, look, all I'm going to say is that at least they're bringing a hard breach. True. I, uh, I can respect that. That is a decision that I'm happy with. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is... It's certainly going to be a challenge for Inns, but, you know, to be honest, we don't know what it is that they've prepared. Maybe they have predicted the Nomad Jaeger ban and they have it all mapped out in their head. We simply do not know all of these answers yet, Oliver, and we've uh, we've got to find out. <laughs> I, but I do think it's going to be an upwards climb for Inns, and I suspect that Furia feel ex exceptionally comfortable with the position they're in right now. It's about whether that confidence is going to get too much. Um, and, and that's obviously something that could happen. And Inter are a team that are more than capable of, of punishing that overconfidence. We see Rare taken out there as first blood. We didn't get to see the circumstances in how he actually fell. Inter have tried to approach in through the garage, but the utility spread here from Furia is far and wide. They've actually got a jammer, I believe, on that garage door. Lender. Looking to try and keep a control of that garage. So, a bit of time and a bit of utility expended there. Fantasy. Pretty much do what he likes here. Not having to worry about that Nomad. So, he's going to be way off and out there. And it's forced into this very thorough full map clear. So they've been able to get down into garage open. But, aside from that, there hasn't really been all too much else that they've been able to accomplish. Nade going to come in, but will get caught out there by the Magnet. Eyes has probably got a couple more of those dotted around as well to keep him safe. We could stay on those main, at the top of those main stairs just outside a fireplace for quite some time. First blood comes in for Furia as Miracle is able to grab that kill onto VNX. But again, an equal one for one trade. And in fact, an advantage here for Ints. Fantasy now. Having to pull off quite an impressive clutch and he won't be able to do so. Vitz, what a round. Ints, they take round number one. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> I, that was a really impressive round for Vitz. And the reason I'm laughing is just the surprise in your voice. You come in this Furia fanboy. You're like, oh, look at this. This is going to be crazy for Furia. And then you're like, oh, that was a really good round for Vitz. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do we know? Nothing. That's the answer. <laughs> no, that was great. And I did say maybe they had it all up their sleeve. They've just hyper-programmed Vitz to be on a roll today. We'll see if that can continue through for the rest of the game, but certainly a good way for Ince to start. I do really want to see them give Furia a run for their money, particularly after these really jammy bands that Furia have put in. If they can just knock them down a peg or two, that would be funny to me. 
It would. It would be a really big, like, don't underestimate us again. Because we have seen teams underestimate, you know, and, and it happens pretty much every, I feel like it happens every stage, Geo, where one of the top dogs will really underestimate a team at the bottom of the table, and the result will, will be really sort of skewed and flipped, and, and they just won't perform on the day. Now, that's not to say that's what's going to happen here. We've seen one round so far. We haven't seen a lot of seed, but it is something that does happen, and we've said it a lot of times. I will continue to say it about last time, and that is that there is quality from top to bottom. And anybody can beat anybody on their day. It really just depends on how these teams show up. And it just so happens that the more consistent ones are at the top. But it doesn't mean that you can count teams like Int out. See how they choose to approach this round. As they're going to be attacking into the kitchen. Fury have gone. I don't want anything to do with bar and stop. I'm going to be bar and games. Excuse me. We're going to be hitting, uh, hitting that kitchen site instead. Bar and stop. Now there's a site. On this map though. We'll see if Ince can do it again. Um, again, this is another one of those sites where you really want to be taking control of the upstairs of the site. You can see a lot of those furious silhouettes just chilling out. There was one caught on the drone too. So Ince are doing well for this intel gathering. Coming in through library. Got to make sure that the top floor is pretty clear course that's why it's a good idea to come in from that side you don't want to have accidentally left the defender out who comes and you know messes you up a little bit later and these these gemini's well he managed to ping out the mute jammer before the gemini got shot they'll definitely help with the intel it's going to come through opening up the office wall as well getting control of office is super important because that's of course how you get control of the the vertical angles into the site below. Furious seem to be taking a much more passive stance inside this round. Hornetar is going to be gathering a little bit of intel on that drone. Ince, Ince is stolen out as well, you know, and they, they haven't really got the, the time or look true to be able to do so time is continuing to take there's still a minute left for them to make something happen I get the impression that furia aren't really well uh jeoparded around at the moment here and that's demonstrated there by fantasy finding two how does he pick the second what is going on it's they're just throwing bodies at him and he is hitting every single shot fancy had no business finding one let alone three of those kills Finally. Four? But finally. Is he going to find this ace? Five? What have we just seen? So what? Like, Vitz got a... Was it a 4K in the previous round? And then Fantasy just aced this one. Well, Fantasy aced that one from, like... Everybody knew where he was. Yeah, but, Polly, didn't I say at the beginning that Fantasy... Like, he... That's the strat. Get rid of him. You can know where he is. Everyone knows where he is, but you still got to get rid of him. That's the strat. Honestly. And Ince didn't do it. They didn't employ the strat. They should have listened to the pre-game segment, which I'm pretty sure is against the rules, but they should have done it anyway. <laughs> I believe we've got a replay of the ace, at least the bits that we caught on the... So we can see the first kill comes through. Fine. Not really too mad about that. It's more every single kill after that. It's the second and the third and the fact he that... He didn't so stray too far from his original position He didn't. Either. He was just doing 360s. He was basically yeah. on the same sort of three metre, like, square of, of, of map. Three square metres of map and then just doing 360s, like, turning this way, turning that way. It was a very unexpected one. I don't think that anyone would expect fancy... Well, I mean, you know he's capable, but you've I'll got to you give what. a bit of benefit to, 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 to try and find that kill. I know this is entirely unfeasible, but I just love the idea that now on each side of this, there's only going to be one player who's picking up the kills. Like, I want to end this with, uh, you know, Vitz is going to have like 30 kills by the end and Fantasy is going to have like 32 or whatever. And then everyone else on zero. That'd be nice. <laughs> I just think it'd be funny. I don't think that it's going to continue on that way, unfortunately. But it's always nice to start off with a lot of kills. Hornet out takes a ton of damage here. 
again, fantasy. He's gonna back off. My mind is just reeling with like a show match idea of that where the, the other four people aren't allowed to have guns out. They've just got to walk around with like the pistol and they can run and they can melee stuff. They can make rotations, but they can't kill anything. And only there's only two people, one person either side that's like, it's a great idea for a show match deal. We need to make it happen. I think it's feasible. I'm not sure how feasible people or two people only getting kills is inside of this game. Because it feels as though into going for a very similar approach to what we see Furia do. And by extension, what we've seen Liquid do in the past. One of the things that makes Furia so good at Chalet is they play it very similarly to how Liquid plays Chalet, and that is dominating the window play. Now, this time it's worked out for Ints. They've actually been able to snag themselves a kill on that window. Miracle has fallen, a C4 gone with him. And this sort of lack of committing to the site or to the map isn't a bad thing. You can catch so many players out on those rotations, but you have to do something to force the players to move. And that's what Zach's going to be trying to work with now as he moves on through. But again, he's going to have fantasy to deal with. And we've already seen what he's capable of today. Is he going to find himself too? Yes, he is locking on to heads like it's nothing. The diffuser down as well. The lion scam roots him in place, but he takes out Hornet Tower as well. How does he know he's there? It can't be back-to-back -back aces in back-to-back -back rounds. Fancy is thirsting after this next one. He's just decided, you know what? I'm going to go. Everyone else is, no user. one else is allowed. No one else is allowed to get this kill. Fancy has to land it and he will. He gets a second ace back-to-back -back aces, Geo. We have never seen this before. I told you. I told you it's just going to be him who gets the kills every single round. That's it. Dude, if this, if this goes to eight rounds, let's say this is a 7-1 game. Fantasy got his first ace on round two, so we can expect 35 kills from him. <laughs> is that now his expected performance? 35 kills is the expected. That's, that's seven rounds of aces. I mean, if you've done it twice, why can't you do it three times? Oh my god. What even is the statistical like? That's just ridiculous. We can... <laughs> it's just aim trainer. Oh, but man, look, it's all on windows. Told you. Fancy is literally playing aim labs out here. And everyone he else is. is in like competitive, like everyone else is in a comp match. And Fancy's just like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna flick, flick, flick. It's the it's the accuracy as well, because here's something that we can we can really start to you know gas him up now. He's got two aces in a row. We know what Fancy's capable of. Currently sitting ten and one, and we're only in round four. That is nuts in itself. Another thing that is extremely impressive. All right, he's doing it with the Roni. And anyone that knows me knows that I'm a little bit of a, a skeptic when it comes to that gun. I think, <laughs> it's, I think it's a great weapon, but I think it's too good. However, something that you've got to bear in mind here. Fancy is getting back-to-back -back kills with this thing. And he's able to do so because he's landing headshots every single time. It sounds like a small thing, but if you're going to go for multi-kills like that with the Roni when you've got barely any, any ammunition in the magazine... You need to be going for these headshots. And he's got such good trigger discipline. At bang, flick, get the headshot. Flick, get the second headshot. Safety, reload, and then repeat. I think one of those kills in the back-to-back -back aces that we've seen hasn't been a headshot. That just goes to show how accurate this guy is, as well as how skilled. I mean, yeah, you don't even... I, that is absolutely a really, really good point. But I think even if you were someone who'd never played Siege before, you don't know anything about the Roni, you don't know anything. Just knowing that he hit those shots alone is so impressive. Unbelievable. It is so good. I don't know. Well, the, the problem is now all the pressure is on him to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, he must be bouncing off the walls. From what you can glean on, like, from his Twitter and stuff, and obviously it's difficult because it's all in Brazilian Portuguese, but I, I, I get the impression that he likes the the sort of the pressure. You know what I mean? I, I think he thrives in that sort of a situation. Obviously, we'll see. Um, we'll see how, how this continues, but I don't know that there's many other players that have done that inside of sort of regular season play. I mean, even at even at tournaments and stuff. I, I don't know of anyone that's got back-to-back -back aces that had... Uh, We'd have to dig through and find out if it's ever been done before. But it's certainly not something that happens all the time. And 
I mean, the doubt that must be floating around in the back of Vince's mind now, knowing that every single one of them has died to him two rounds in a row and that they all could have done something about it. I mean, where do you go from that mentally? Oh, Panther, come on, dude. Got to hit the shots. <laughs> the, the, the pressure is on now. It, one thing I do... Oh, no. Oh, he didn't quite land it. I was going to say one thing I love about the way that he plays is the fact that he's so good at just flipping between, between these multiple angles. But right now, it's into a popping off. Zach, Vitz, Bonatow getting taken down. But this does not look like a momentum swing in the favor of Furia. It really doesn't. Miracle has got a lot of work to do along with highs and they are unable to do so. You could be excused at the moment for thinking that Fury are a one-player team. Because if Fancy isn't getting the kills, these guys are falling apart, Gio. Oh, hold on. There was one other player who has one kill up until this round. I don't remember who it was. So you can't count them out. Come on, Ollie. That's a kill. That's more kills than I get. I mean... <laughs> Look at Fancy's kills, and then let's have the, let's start the conversation. It was really nice, you know, that it was Zach that took him out because Zach is another young gunner who came into uh, the BR6 last stage and has really started to make a bit of a name for himself. The consistency isn't quite there yet, but you can just tell that he's another very talented player, and you can kind of throw him into that same category as as like a reset, where you know that in a couple of years' time they're just going to be incredible. Um, let's have a look and see who got the Miracle's got three, and that's it. So, so far, Miracle and Fancy are, are Furia. Jesus. <laughs> that's the, that's, that's all I can say. All right, so what? Okay, we're back to kitchen. This was the first fantasy <laughs> ace site. was and he, he looks like he, he's heading on up back to a similar position he was like guarding down bathroom bathroom was his it was his bathroom yeah it was his bathroom that was his that was his zone I, i'm just very curious I'm just waiting with bated breath. That's why I'm not even really saying much. I'm just like, I, I just want to see. To be honest, we just need to lock into Fancy's POV and just keep there for until he either starts getting kills or dies. Because that's that's really what everybody wants to see at this moment in time. It's like, we, we just want to watch Fancy's POV and, and just see if he's going to be able to do it again. Not for any other reason than it would just be nice to see a player that gets three aces inside of one game. But... Uh, I guess time will tell. Ints are by no means out of this one. Like, this is still a very winnable game, and I think that Furia need to start to find a little bit of that confidence from, from their other players because, you know, we joke about, you know, Miracle and Fancy being the only two players with kills, but five rounds into the game, sure, Fancy's had two aces, but he didn't have to. You know, he, he's not had to have that many kills so far. There's been plenty of opportunity for the other guys to get involved as well, and they've just not really been enabled in that same way. So Ints are doing some things right, and it's about whether they can continue. And who knows, if they're actually able to clear out this top four this time, they may see a little bit more success. But at the moment, they're taking a long time to do anything. Ooh, first kill going to Ints. Maybe they're going to start pulling things back. It wasn't on the fantasy, though. Highs hasn't had a single kill just yet, so... And given that he's playing an operator whose utility goes down a little bit early, it's not a huge problem either. But Vitz to follow up. At this point, so many of these rounds are so momentum-based. Rare, how did you even get a horn attack? What are you doing? Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm about to set an expectation and suddenly it's all changing. I was going to say so many of these rounds have been momentum-based. So you would assume that it would be going towards ints purely because of those opening kills. But... It's been evened out now already. And Vitz has been a pretty significant player for in so far. So for him to be down isn't great. Fantasy is quite low on health though. So he's going to be limited for his options. Ripple will use his last Toxic Babe onto those Solarium stairs. So... 
It's an angle that doesn't really have to be worried about at the moment. Fancy knows there's still going to be players upstairs. Instead, chooses to drop, recognizing that he needs to try and stop this plant from going down, as that's the way that this round is going to be won here by Ince. Miracle hits the swing, lands the shot, and that's Diffuser down. Picks up the second as well. Rare finds his first kill of the game onto Drunks. Not a bad one there. Pick up. Did lock the round in. With the time so low and the diffuser cold on solar stairs, it was very unlikely since we're going to be able to get anything done. But Furia, stand firm and eventually lock it out in another way other than by fantasy. They're diversifying. They're bringing new ideas into the team. And it's good. I, I'm getting, I, I was getting a little bit worried, Gio, because the first blood has been something that Ints are so consistent with. Yeah. That... Fury are just not not even looking anywhere near in that first engagement. I'm not sure how they're giving themselves away so quickly. We're not always getting to get a clear clear picture of it. But even that engagement upstairs, Fitz shutting Lender down. It's not a it's not an engagement that Lender should win, but it's one that he certainly could. Could have, yeah. Um, I, that, yeah, it's the whole converting the first. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's what I was saying in that round. I was like, right, Ince have had these first two kills. I'm fully expecting them to take the rest of the round. So for Furia to have actually come back, stunted that momentum and turned it back onto Ince, that felt like the first round the way they actually did that. Well, let's see if Furia can come out of this at an advantage or not. They could potentially finish this at a 4-2 split. Ints have the opportunity to equal things up here as well. So, we'll have to see. Last bedroom and the office is the site that has been chosen. Not too worried for the side switch. We see the opening kill go in favor. I think that's part of the problem, you know, Jill. Rare is just so aggressive onto that main window. And we saw him the first pick last time uh, in, in round number one. I don't think he's been first pick since, but just even putting yourself into that harm's way is a bit of a problem. Well, he didn't even come away with any damage in that altercation. So I'd, I'd say that that's, that's good. That's a good thing. So, yeah, back to Master. Just to bring that one up. Which, uh, again, this was the second... The second fantasy ace site. Miracle had a pretty good round in that last round, so maybe we'll see some more of that from him. I think the fact that, that Rare is still out and about, this is pretty big. But look at all these trades! The shotgun from Miracle! He knew that he was right there and Lender to follow up as well, but it's still back and forth. Two players remaining. May that one player remaining for Ince and it's all on Hornetow. Who else but Fancy to pick that final kill up? A messy round by all accounts. I think that Ince really tried to rush that and Fury were just ready for them. Miracle has been putting in work with that shotgun. It's back-to-back -back rounds now that we've seen him get two kills just with the shotty and it really isn't as easy as just lining them up and knocking them down. The timing is crucial. You could see him getting the kill, dipping away, getting the kill, hitting that re-peak, being very successful with it. A little bit of frustration, maybe, from Ints. They've played a very slow and considered attacking phase up until that last round, and they really just tried to rush it, and, and I'm not entirely sure why they're sort of slow and steady and uh, in an attempt to win the races. has it, really been working out for them. But uh, in that round, at least, they went for something with a little bit more speed, and uh, we all saw how it went so furia will finish their defensive phase with an advantage or to split this is where they can really start to reap some of those benefits of the slightly quirkier bands throughout you know uh, obviously the nomad ban is uh, is something that they took advantage of on the defense but that jaeger ban we, we see a lot of jaeger plays events and maybe it's going to be enough just to knock a few people off yeah this one could hurt uh, just having a look at the operators that Fury have brought. There are a lot of nades. There are a lot of nades. Are there eight nades, though? Because <laughs> <laughs> um, this is an important question. No, there can't be. Because that would be four people, in which case you can't have three people with flashes. So you've got six nades. It's a little... It's a test every time. 
It is. Well, yeah, the thing is, is four plus three is seven. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> there's two extra players. There's, there's, there's no one there who, uh, you know, unless they're changing the way that Rainbow Six is played, there aren't two other players on the team. So, but they do still have a ton of nades. Six is a lot of nades. It's especially a lot of nades when you're not going up against any kind of impeding utility. It really is, and there's a reluctance to play a Wamai, and I'm unsure why, but you would think that a Wamai would be a good pick. First kill, going to go traded one for one, as Highs will eventually find something here. That was his first kill of the game so far. He's arguably given himself up, especially on the Flores. Not really got to see too much of use from the drones out of him just yet. Fantasy. I want to pop the Aruni gate, doesn't want to give the game away just yet. But there's going to be a bit of information on him. Rare moves through. He's probably going to try and open up that breach. On the Maverick, it would be relatively easy to get something open, although Rare isn't making it look pretty. Certainly potential for nades to come on in as well. Lender, great little fade away down onto Hornetow. He may not know it yet, but E1D at least in the players in spot. Bits, not concerned. Goes for the C4. The wall is still being attempted to be open here. Fancy cleans up kill from earlier on that would be the one that lender got down what is rare what is that that is the messiest breach i think i've ever seen geo <laughs> tidy that up do it again it looks like a rhombus <laughs> what's wrong with a rhombus just it's time consuming to make look at the say of it <laughs> it is um yeah it's a curious one but yeah whatever let the man live oh just Fantasy, you couldn't let him live. VNX didn't even know. Did not even know. Fantasy's just getting in there. But back on to Miracle. One of those other big players for Fury. And he's back and forth. Why are these players from Inns just showing themselves through lines of sight? That is the third time that has happened in this round. And Fantasy is fully going to take advantage of that. He's honestly 10 steps ahead every single time. The game sense is incredible, and the information that he's obviously being fed is, uh, is certainly working out for him there. Those last two, again, you know, there's a degree of he's getting lucky here in this game. There's a degree of this is his game, but he's also in the right place at the right time. It's not every day that you, you rock up against a smoke and he's actually got a Toxic Babe canister in his hand, but that's the sort of timing that Fantasy's on today. Everything is just working out perfectly, and he's taking full advantage of it. 5-2 scoreline as it currently sits. Another successful round for Furia. They were in no danger, really, in terms of that last round. They had a lot of things going for them at the time. They had man count and a lot of the control. Ints, where are you going to find a round? That is the question now. You need to start to make something happen, make a little bit of a change. Is it going to come from the basement? That is where they'll be taking us. You know, it's almost weird to think that this is the first time we've seen the basement in this game, just given how much we saw it last week. It was all the time, wasn't it? Teams were digging the basement, dude. They loved it. Yeah, it might be all. We're very fond. Well, we'll see how this one is going to go. Again, it's curious because, you know, Maverick, your only hard breacher, probably not who I would pick. If I were taking a solo hard breacher, I don't think I would go with a Maverick to be attacking onto the basement. Feels like there's too much that you got to get open, and especially if you want to be getting something like the snow door open, an exothermic charge is always going to be like so much better. Um, but we'll see what they can do with the resources they have. Better than no hard breach. See how rare's rhombus goes this round. What a <laughs> nade from fantasy! Goodness, Zach has been taken out of the picture. That extended roam that Ints are trying to employ. Not really working out for them. Miracle has just got the freest intel of his life on the drone. And Vitz hasn't seen it. He's so preoccupied with the hopping. Eventually, he does take the drone out. Maybe trying to bait something out there. Hornetow going to be the next player to fall. By the time that Furia gets aside, there is going to be nobody there. With the way that Ints are giving themselves up on the roam, it really is time to get themselves back down to sight. But Drunks is going to try and double down. He says, you know what? They're not going to expect this now. I'm going to make that rotation. I'm going to try and get myself upstairs. I'm going to be the only one to do it, though. VNX and Vitz are both firmly on the site. 
Drunk's maybe giving himself away there, but it seems that Highs didn't hear that audio cue. He'll root himself in place. Vitz, chance at the Gemini, but he's only going to give himself away by doing so. Drunk's eventually going to drop down, or is he still thinking better of it? Desperate to try and waste as much time as possible and give his team a fighting chance here. I mean, Fury are looking pretty damn strong <laughs> at this point. And just because of the nature of the, the site, it's very big. There are a lot of entrances to it. This is going to be very hard to defend against the full five stack when there's just three of you remaining. Think of this area. You've got Elbow, you've got Blue, you've got these different staircases. You've got down towards Trench, you've got up towards the, the main stairs. There's so many players. That was a beautiful shot, though, I have to say. But Furia coming back in with another two. Just leaves Drunks on his own, and he's upstairs. So, he's... <laughs> I was going to say, he's going to have to reconcile with the uh, staircase, but didn't even get a chance. I think we always knew that Drunks was going to get caught off site there. His, his attitude toward that final sort of half of the round was just, I need to be upstairs, I need to try and waste more time. But there were just too many ways that Furia could slip on by him. Something else that's worth highlighting inside of that round was just how good Furia's drones were. They had drones for everything. And I think that's in part one of the reasons why they're able to perform so well here they just know exactly what is going on at any given moment six rounds to two currently for furia they are on that match point going to be attacking into bar seeing the doka be brought this time speaking of drones as well just as that replay plays i think that first kill that fancy was able to get onto zach with the nade more than likely off the back of a drone. Obviously, it's a common spot. It's somewhere that's worth checking. You don't want to check it with a nade. But you'll check it with a drone and then nade it afterwards. Yep. And again, it just, just goes to show how effective Furia are at that information exchange, at how and where their drones are placed. Uh, and it's really giving them the edge here over Ints. Yeah, the way they've used it to support fantasy as well has just been so good. I mean, the man has a KD of nine right now. No drones on defense, though. And both of his aces were on defense, so there must have been other things there that were, uh, that were keeping him That's very him that. true. That's very true. Maybe it was There's still time, though. Ollie, you got one more round. I mean, in theory, we could have many more rounds, but... <laughs> I mean, that's like what I said last week when Furia were playing. Let's see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I believe, though. I think there's potentially only one more round here. Certainly, Ints haven't given us any indication that they're going to be able to really mix things up that I, much. I do just want... Ooh, this is messy around the corner. It's going to be backing off. Finally lands the headshot. Nice. And then you worry about the camera. It, it just makes me wonder, at what point did Int start to think, oh, man, going to Shallow was a bad idea? Probably round three. Yeah. I think, I think it happened... At ace number two? Yeah, ace number two. I think it happened fairly early on. I mean, we're on for ace number three here because Fancy's found the first one. So, I mean, if there's a will, there's a way, right? He's, he's making that rotation upstairs. His team are all with him. He's got plenty of people that can call out for him here. I guess it all depends on whether anyone from Fury gets a kill first. That would really be where the dream does start to die. But we can see Ints. They're going to be holding on. They're occupying those usual zones with the Flores drones are going to be moving through to remove a lot of that utility. Barbed wire, Banshees and shields, but a Toxic Babe canister to cut everything off for the meantime. Still holding on to position upstairs is Vitz. He has also had a pretty decent game, although he's not on quite a 9kd. And still with his shield there as well, so that's going to need clearing, and you can see this getting prepared now. Fantasy lobbing the nade down the stairs, but it gets caught in the Wamai disc. It doesn't actually do anything right now. Vitz is trying to hold onto the crossfire, onto the window, but Fantasy just reacts very quickly, gets rid of him, and that's cleared so much space for Furia. It's also kill number two, and now make it three, as Fantasy is poised and ready for his third ace of the game. He's going to pick up the kill onto VNX. And it's only Drunks that remains. His teammates have got to let him grab this one. Miracle, what are you doing? Miracle steals Fantasy's third ace. I'm sure that he That's isn't going to so mind rude. too much. That is going to be GG. That wraps up the game. Seven rounds to two. 
I mean, in my heart, fantasy got three aces. You know, it was yeah. one kill away. It was like a five versus one. There was the chance to make that happen, but he'll walk away with a guaranteed two. What a performance. 22, 22 two. kills, Gio. What is that? I have, I've, I've never seen anything like that in in the four, four and a half, however many years it's been that I've been casting Siege. I have never seen a performance like that. Um, you've, he's you've, so chill as well. He's just like, yeah. He's the coolest cat in town. Oh my God. What a game. What a game. What a result for Furia. They are going to be extremely happy with that one. Um, I'm sure that we'll get to speak to Twister soon as uh, Twister is usually their nominated interviewee but 